we come back to my childhood home where we have our grandfather's 1964 Galaxy 500 sitting over there, but that's not the star of the show today. Today we're doing a video on one vehicle that's been basically in our family forever. We've had this since I was a little kid. I'll put up a couple videos that I can find and a couple photographs. said this full truck has been inside the family for a long 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 time and you know what the last time we had it out was around 2017 we took it to the Atlantic Nationals I did a video on that a while back with 2022 Nationals but back in 2017 is pretty much the last time this sweetheart was on the road after that it kind of putted around the yard a little bit but now it doesn't start so and it hasn't started for you know year and a half or so and it's been basically sitting where you see it so let's see if we can get this old guy running again and see if he'll purr like a kitten welcome to high hill stable garage you know there's just something to be said Ford knew what they were doing back when they built this truck. The styling is just timeless on these. Let me bring you guys in. Simplicity was how these trucks were made. And simplicity aged usually is elegance. If you look, you got a little tiny marker light right inside there. You have your H4 bulbs, little tiny eyelids on them. They're kind of cool. Chrome caps, basically like an inverted jail bar grill. And you know, when they recessed this in, it added depth. And on some of the other trucks, like a Fargo, that kind of era, they don't have the depth. And there's just something about the 1950s Ford truck that just stands right out. This generation right here had the signal lights up on the fender. I believe these are to be 2017 and 2018, but it could be 2016 and 2017. Not entirely sure. This old sweetheart of a truck is a two wheel drive flavor and this would be the long bed back in the day. But this truck's pretty much untouched from when we got it. It's pretty much just how it looks. We did a couple things like a new window rubber at the back, a couple things on the inside of the engine. You'll see that in a second. We added some chrome caps and some chrome center beauty rings around our steely wheels, but that's basically all what we did to this truck. So getting into an F47, that's what this guy is, it's a lot like every other Ford truck. Some real meaty doors on it, you know? Running boards, all that stuff. These cabs are quite small from factory. Let me grab hold of you guys and I'll show you kind of what we're looking at here. So, <laughs> if it echoes, that's because I got the doors closed. But this old cab is quite small. Like, this is me center line, right? Let me extend my arm. I'm about an inch, inch and a half away from touching the other door. But again, simplicity ages very well. It turns into elegance as things go on. So on this truck, some things that we had to do, we have basically just an aftermarket turn stock on it because the originals are super pricey, that kind of stuff. We just got a little twisty knob guy here. Back when we were driving this truck a lot, my dad, he made some burlap seats out of some old coffee bags. They aged really well and they've held up really, really nice. That's some old dated plastic on that. But these are your vents right here. You got your cigarettes. Come on now. Oh, maybe I got to screw that out. Oh, I think, no. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that's your ashtray. I don't know why it's seized on, but it is. Oh, there we go. That's your ashtray. As you can see, it's been converted into a bolt bin back in the day. And here's your glove box. Isn't that some cool? You'll see this in another truck coming up, but this is your heater box down here for your vents. That's your heater core up inside there. Crazy, eh? That is your main vents. Let's see if I can open up your ankle vent. Oh, that's seized up now. 
but that's your floor vent and then if you open up both of these those are your side vents and also how you angle your heat you don't see that at all anymore old doghouse box really cool though it is rocking a manual three speed here i believe the pattern is reverse first second and third but right, we got our three speed clutch right there mechanical linkage on this bad boy brakes uh to the floor so there's no brakes on her anymore she's been sitting a while and then you got your accelerator right here mechanical choke maybe that's mechanical choke it's been a while since i drove this there's your key all that sweet sweet jazz i think this is <laughs> you guys ever see that that is your cigarette lighter odd spot to put it eh never quite seen that on any other vehicles they put it right behind the column but yeah that pretty much sums up the interior on this old gal let's open up the hood and let's get to the meat and potatoes of what we're here for so again ford knew what they were doing back in the styling of this year simplicity elegance but also some creativity this is your hood release you wouldn't even notice it but that's your hood release you pull up and then off you go but let me bring you guys in and i'll show you exactly what we're dealing with with this old ford this is a flathead ford v8 pretty awesome eh three speed manual with a flathead ford can't get much better than that back in the day here you go a little bit more on the inside it's running a true dual exhaust you can kind of see it poking on both sides so some neat stuff about the ford flathead v8 is it runs dual water pumps belt driven of course as you can see there's one here there's one right there and then as for things that we've done to this i believe we put a new generator on this some new spark plug wires new voltage regulator an electric fan just because this guy wasn't uh, putting out exactly what he should at that point new radiator small stuff but again relatively untouched got the fuel pump at the back i guess we changed him out too oh, that might be why it's not running but we'll come back to him coil distributor all that stuff so what we're going to start out with on this old sweetheart first is basically the ignition system i think that's what went on it so let me bring you guys in let's take a look at that loose cap right now first time for me seeing this too so we got a new-ish cap likely doesn't have a lot of miles on it because again we didn't drive it a lot new-ish rotor and there's our points right up inside there really really loose which is odd wiring's pretty simplistic it goes from here to our coil coil main power he goes over to our ignition box up inside the wires on it aren't the hottest but it should be good enough to start up now, even though this truck shouldn't fight us an awful lot seized wise and all that kind of stuff we still got to go through it preemptively because again it hasn't been touched for a couple of years so it's a direct drive fan on this so put a little bit of tension on the belt and i should be able to turn the fan and it will turn the crank get a full rotation out of her and we got it so the engine's not seized up that's the first thing we wanted to check you see that crank all the way down there put some tension on the belt and i turn it see it's turning the crank so we're fine there let's go ahead and check the oil here move the spiders out of the way oh yeah she's overfilled very overfilled kind of smells like a mix between fuel and oil so we might have even had a fuel pump that went out it's hard to say let me check her again see that's where we're at right now where that line is that's where we got to be so it's not the worst that i've ever seen but it's definitely a little bit full so what i'm going to do now now that we know we have oil and we know it turns over i'm going to put a hot battery in it and we're just going to whirl it and see if it whirls fine a little suit in you know we got the old ford fixing up the old ford we got grampy's box fixing up the old ford next to the galaxy whole bunch of cool stuff going on thing about these old six nines you run two batteries 
I'm gonna get rid of this old battery in here. It's a old probably. Most likely he has no jazz. And we're gonna go put one of the F250 battery in it for right now because we know this guy works fine. Perfect. And now let's check and see. Let's see if any of the systems are working. Well, we got starter click. That's good. That's what we want. We don't got anything else, though. We got horn? No, we don't got horn. But we got lights. No, we don't got lights. Don't know what... Oh, don't know what that is. Let's uh, throw him back on there. But we don't have any electronics in the cab right now. Don't know what this guy is. What's he do? Don't know. Hard to say really so we're gonna have to go from there no electronics in the cab but we do have our starter click and that's what we want so we're gonna key on for right now and we'll move on from there so with key on power right now we should have power down our just dis distributor but as you can see that guy lights up we'll check here at our solenoid it's a little odd that we're receiving power right across it right now but that's all right. See, this guy, he should have power right now. That's our signal wire to our cab. No power on the signal. So let me go get a jumper and we'll try her out. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna see, we have power going to our solenoid, but we don't have power coming away. So I'm just gonna activate the hot side. And we have solenoid clicking. Do we have solenoid power going down to our starter? Yes, we do. Okay. That's all fine and dandy. All right, so let's try that again, see if we get any whirls. No whirling, no whirling down at our starter. All right, so after a little bit of fiddling, we got her to whirl over. We had a loose connection here and a really, really loose connection down at the starter. But now if I take my jumper, and I go hot side right here. And I take my hot side and I go to the signal on the stereo solenoid. We get whirlage. So everything's turning like it should be. We might as well check our our points right now. So to check our points to see if they're working, I'm just gonna pull the rotor off completely. And we're gonna be eyeing that guy right there. I'm gonna be watching for this, basically. Let's see. And now what we gotta do, we gotta check for power. So let's see here. So do we have power at our points? Doesn't seem like it. Do we have power on our test light? Yes, we do. Okay. So, do we have power output on the coil? No. Do we have power output? Do we have power input on the coil? No. So we have no power going to our coil. It will never run that way. So, and it will never power our points if we don't have power coming from our coil. So, what we gotta do now is basically power up this side. Well, it's a good thing we got some nice jumper wire. So if I put him down on the coil, right there, just like so, we should be energizing up our coil now. There we go. Should have power output. Doesn't seem to be any power output. No, nope, doesn't seem to be any power output at all. Interesting. But that doesn't mean, oh, there we go. Okay. Never mind, I'm just being dumb. That's how, how our coil works. See how my test light comes on? That means that it's controlled with our arm right here. And it's all working as it should. So, with me turning this guy over... Oh, now we got power. See, I don't know what I'm talking about. Never mind. Don't, don't listen to me. So, but now we got power here. So, what we're going to do, we're going to put our cap on. We're going to see what happens. When I activate this wire, it should turn the whole engine over. It might not start because there's no fuel going to it, but it should do something. So, 
So you know how it is, Tim Hortons always provides. So we have a little Tim Hortons orange juice bottle filled with a little bit of regular gas mixed with ATF. That's why it has the purple tint or the pink tint. We're gonna get that right down the vent and hopefully fill up this carburetor. Double check all of our systems here. We're gonna see if it does anything, here we go. Almost. It's coming alive. What a sweetheart. Oh, too much. <laughs> too much. I got to keep the choke closed a little bit yet. Keep the choke go down a little bit. See if we can close it up just a touch. There we go. There's nothing that quite sounds like a flathead Ford. <laughs> just hums along like a nice little kitten. There's a couple other issues on this old Ford that have to be addressed, but we're gonna save those for later videos. Let me know if you guys wanna see more on this F47, because it's just a nice old sweetheart. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see you guys in the next one really, really soon. All right, see ya.